former NFL offensive lineman, co-host of Breakfast on Broad. And he's also part of the Eagles pregame show that you can hear during each Eagles game here on 97.3 ESPN. Barrett Brooks, how I you doing? The inmates have the inmates have taken over the asylum. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're 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 running the hallway screaming and yelling. We got it, baby. Yeah, we you, got it, baby. Oh <laughs> uh, no, you guys are good, man. You know I appreciate you guys having me on. So Barrett, I wanted to start out with. You know, we had the game on Saturday, and, you know, I, I, I hate to be the Debbie Downer of the conversation, but I have to ask this question, and that is, I feel like Sam Bradford is the greatest preseason <laughs> Game 3 quarterback of all time because in two straight game preseason Game 3s, he's looked really good, Barrett. Well, I mean, hopefully he takes that into the season. Um, I think there will be a little more of an eye, knowing, knowing that he uh, he has a lot to prove. And um, it, it's not just for the team, not just for the Eagles, but he's also in, auditioning for 31 other teams. And I, I think that's the biggest difference on how he's going to play this year. He wanted a long-term deal, couldn't get a long-term deal because, you know, the heir apparent is still sitting there. And now he has to go out and play. And maybe, you know, it could, you know, help both sides. It could help the Eagles and it can help himself. And, you know, I mean, the third part, whoever picks him up, they trade him to, maybe they can get a reliable pick out of it. So I think there's going to be a lot of – circumstances in which will push him towards playing very, very good this year. And he's the king of getting his money, man. He He's probably one of the only guys I've known play out their whole rookie contract and now still licks, hits another lick for his second contract. Barrett Brooks with us talking to Eagles football. And Barrett, the Eagles didn't waste any time in making their roster moves. They didn't wait until today. They did it on Sunday around dinner time. And two of the big names on there, Chris Givens and Ruben Randall, either one of those guys a surprise to you? You know what? After the after the second preseason game, it wasn't a surprise that Randall was was released. His big knock on him was he didn't work hard, and you know it just proved it. You know against the against the Steelers, you know he was the third option on a, on a, on the route, and he just gave up on the route. He gave up on the go. You cannot give up on a quarterback like that, especially a young quarterback like that, and just you know quits on the go route. How I mean, how do you how do you do that as an older player or a veteran player, understanding? that that's the knock on you and you still fulfilling it. It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. All right, this is who I am. This is what they label me, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I play exactly the way they say that I'm going to play. So he just played his way out of there. I cannot believe it. You know, he's a lot better player than that. He has a lot better skill set than that. For him to go out and just display something like that, the iron is kind of a lie. They were eventually going to see that, you know, whether the ball stones him or not, they were going to see that in the meeting room. So I don't understand why he did it. And because of your pedigree on the offensive line and a Super Bowl champion with the Steelers, how about the uh, move to cut Andrew Gardner? Were you surprised by that? No. Well, I mean, in all actuality, you know, the whole second team is, is, is not really uh, good at all. You know, they're, they're backups, and he was a backup to a backup. So he had a little bit of a, a glass shining light last year when he had won the starting job, then got hurt, you know, so – I never thought that he was a real player anyways, but, you know, the fact that, you know, he kind of proved it this time. And, you know, I, I, I still don't see how they have Tobin still in there also. I, I don't believe – I think he's a backup to a backup also. So, until they start getting guys in like Big V and, you know, say Amalu, once those guys start playing better, they'll have more quality backups. They can just now start drafting to fill this um, – to fill us off of the lineup with some guys that are quality players. There's no way that Tobin should be on the roster, and I'm not on the roster right now. Real quick, Barrett, why uh, why has Wisniewski not gotten more reps than he has to this point? Uh, why do you think there's – I mean, he seems to have that established pedigree, but what are the coaches seeing or what do you see that Wisniewski's not breaking into that starting role? Well, he didn't have a, pre, he didn't have a good preseason, to be honest with you, not until this last game. I mean, he stepped it up this last game and played, you know, played rather good. But, the, you know, the previous games, you know, against Tampa Bay and against the Steelers, he didn't play well at all. You know, his footwork weren't tied to his hands, and he got beat on some simple moves that he shouldn't have got beat on. He left a lot of pressure on the quarterback. I think he gave him a sack also uh, in the first game against Tampa Bay. So he didn't play well enough really to establish himself and, 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 and separate himself to be that starting guy. You know, it wasn't even really – if Lane Johnson was still – um, you know, a part of, well, if he was he didn't have this looming, uh, uh, you know, situation over him right now, then Wes Newski would probably be in order to get cut also, you know, the fact that they like to say a model. So 
I think, you know, it kind of helped him a little bit. It also opened his eyes. I'm like, hey, you know, just because I'm a starter doesn't mean I'm going to be a starter here. i got to work a little harder than I've been working and put myself in a better position to be successful. So he turned it up this last game, established himself uh, clearly as a better player than Sam Mala. So he probably will start if they don't hand down a suspension to uh, the Johnson. They they hand a suspension down the lane, then he's definitely not going to be starting, you know. So, uh, you know, he played his way into a position to play right now. So Barrett Brooks, you played the offensive line in the NFL. And Barrett, I wanted to ask you as well with the offensive line, I feel like in the last two preseason games, Alan Barber has gotten better at that right tackle position. It seems like the more reps he's getting at the position, he's getting to be a lot more comfortable out there. Well, I, that that really wasn't the move that I was really looking at. I knew he would be a pretty good tackle. Not a good tackle. I mean, not a – not an you know, above average tackle, but he'd be a pretty good tackle. That's his natural position. That's what he started off in the NFL as a tackle. So they just recently moved him over to guard last year. So, you know, he's a better tackle than he is a guard, you know, throughout his career. So I knew that would be an easy transition for him. He has great technique. He's a competitor. So he'll be okay out there. They might have to send a tight end or a back over to help him protect him sometimes with these speed rushers. But he'll be okay. You know, it, it won't be as bad right there. The big problem on the offensive line, you have to really go look at that left guard position. That's probably the, the weakness at this point. But, you know, at, you know, I think that right tackle is pretty sold up right now. They're going to be all right there. Barrett, I also want to ask you, staying on the offensive side, we got to finally see Josh Huff do some different things. Doug Peterson has been hinting at the fact that they've been installing plays for this guy. They've been creating different ways to utilize him. And we got to see him get two catches, two runs. He had a touchdown. And he looked a little bit like a bit of a uh, playmaking utility knife. Is that something we can expect from him during the regular season? Absolutely. I mean, they game planned that. They wanted to get his confidence up. So they game plan to put him in better positions, you know, running you know, routes that, you know, are, are better for him as a player. He's a guy that he runs after the catch. You give him a little slant route or a little drag route across the middle of the field, hit him in stride. I mean, he's an explosive player after he catches. His yak yards will be off the chart. It's just getting him to catch the ball without any interference. He has to get the ball almost perfectly for him to fulfill that, you know, for him to catch it. So if you get him and put him in position and game plan that he's open on pass plays and that he doesn't have to, you know, catch a ball in traffic and hand the balls off to him on reverses and things of that nature, He'll blow your mind away because he's a great athlete. He's probably one of the most explosive players on the team, but you have to put him in good positions. Also, they game plan a little bit to show you what the tight end can do. If you look at Trey Burton, Trey Burton played a really good game because they put him in a better position to play. This wasn't really a vanilla type of um, uh, game plan that they put in for Indy. They actually game plan a little bit, get guys with confidence going a little more, and put guys in a better position to be successful. And that's why that offense looked pretty good this last game. Hey, Barrett, since you're talking a little bit about Josh Huff and receivers, uh, how many do you think make the team, and do you think Paul Turner is part of that group? Yeah, I do. I think he's the fifth-best receiver on the team. So through default of, of two guys and Gibbons and Randall uh, not going out there and proving that they need to be on the roster, he's there by default. And it's not you know, it's like they're handing him anything. He went out and earned that fifth roster spot on the, on the wide receiver. He went and earned it. You know, He was the most consistent guy they've had this year. He's a guy that went out there and, and showed it in practice, not just in games, but in practice. And then when they gave him a chance to go against number one guys, veteran guys, guys that are going to play on Sunday, you know, when the season started, he still went out there and produced. So, you know, he's earned a spot on this team, a spot on the roster, the spot on the 53-man roster simply because nobody else could catch, and, uh, and he was catching it. Barrett Brooks is with us. You can watch him on uh, Comcast on Breakfast on Broad on TCN and then watch that. Re wow, the 6 to, 6 to 8 a.m. is pretty early for me, Barrett, but the 11 yeah. to 1, I, I really like the replay. <laughs> that fits <laughs> that fits my hours just fine. <laughs> and appreciate it, appreciate it. And, of course, you can hear him on Eagles pregame coverage as well. So, Barrett, I guess uh, since we talked a little offensive line, if you take Lane Johnson out of that list, you think they keep nine guys? Is that is that what you're looking at? Um, there's, there's, they're going to have to keep nine guys. They're going to have to, you know, and a couple practice squad guys, you know, simply because at this point Peterson is looking pretty good. And, you know, even though he's a little long in the tooth, they're going to put him in, and give him days in which he can, you know, 
calm down a little bit and sit back a little bit and rest a lot more than most players. You got to give him vet days. You know, you don't want him to beat his body up. And last year, Chip beat his body up. Doug's going to take care of him this day. He's going to give him a couple of vet days in which he can take some, you know, time off. He's going to take some nine on sevens off. Those are the things that be up on your body. He doesn't necessarily need those type of reps at this point in his career. He understands what it is to be an all-pro tackle. So don't put him in those type of situations. Let him just play hard on Sundays, and the rest will take care of itself. I think he'll be pretty healthy throughout the season simply because Doug will make sure that he's healthy throughout the season. So I think he'll be all right this year. Yeah, you'd be looking then, I guess, at Peters, Sayamalu, Kelsey, Brooks, Barber, Wisniewski, your favorite, Matt Tobin, Vitae, and Andrews as the guys that are uh, the nine, and then maybe that Dylan Gordon is a guy that could have an outside chance to make the roster and or the practice squad. Well, I mean, don't count, you know, Barrett Jones out either. You know, he has a slight chance of being there. So, you know, he plays center and guard, you know, so those two things, you know, he's, he's okay at. So he might get a chance to, um, to make the open day roster also. And that has nothing to do with the fact that his name is Barrett and you're Barrett Brooks, right? <laughs> right, you know, but you know, he can play a little bit. You know, he played at Alabama. You know, good player. You know, when uh, once he starts learning what it is to be a pro. Barrett Brooks, we're having him here on the Sports Bash ninety seven three ESPN. Barrett, sticking on the offensive side of the ball, I'm at the point looking at Nelson Aguilar, and I think he needs a sports shrink because I hear the way Doug Peterson talks about him. I hear the way Sam Bradford talks about him. I hear the way he talks about himself, and there seems to be a disconnect with reality because then when he gets on the field, he just makes weird plays. And when the best thing you can say about a guy is, well, he's great at blocking downfield, I'm sorry, but I'm paying a guy to catch the ball, not block the ball, Barrett. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know, and he said physically he's, his body is ready to play, mentally say he's ready to play, but I, I, that's, <clears throat> that's the thing that he's not ready. Mentally, I don't think at this point – He's um he's tied in all the way. Not to say he doesn't want to be great. He wants to be great, but he still has some issues with confidence. And confidence is something that you learn. <clears throat> excuse me, that you learn and, and 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 you get as you play more. And the people around him have to be confident. If you notice after he he dropped the ball and and they got the interception, you know Sam Brack didn't go back to him. And he's gonna have to just not just build his confidence up, but build Sam Brack's confidence up that's going to him. You know, quarterbacks don't want to throw the guys. They don't think it'll be reliable enough to catch it. And uh, Sam will start looking away from him. So he needs to get his head screwed on straight, get his confidence level back. And you're right, he maybe needs to go to a sports strength, you know, to get him tied in to the rest of, um, you know, rest of his efforts. You know, he works hard. He's a, he's a consummate pro. He makes sure he does little things. He Physically, he does everything he's supposed to do. But mentally, sometimes it takes a little more or you just check out. You know, overall, looking at the Eagles' offense, I don't know if it's going to be as good as we saw on Saturday night, but, you know, Barrett, how would you rate how this offense can do? Because we saw them do a little bit of everything. We saw them do the plays with Josh Huff. We saw them throw the fade pass to Doriel Green-Beckham. We saw the play in the flat to Trey Burton, and we saw them run the ball. So from what you've seen in this preseason, what can we overall expect from the Eagles' offense this year? Um. They're not going to be necessarily an explosive offense. They're going to be a ground and pound, um, move, the play, move, the, move the sticks. You know, they're going to be that type of offense. They're not going to get the special plays. They really, they only have really one special um, explosive player uh, on the team, and that's I mean that's Sproles at this point. He's a, he's a difference maker. Josh Huff can be that guy when he's put in, in better positions. You know, you have the game plan guys like him. You have the game plan guys like you know Aguilar to be successful. Sproles, you don't have to game plan him. He's that explosive. So with, you know, Matthews, if he plays well, keeps healthy, runs in between the tackles, it could open up a couple of things in the offense because, you know, then they can use play action. There's going to be a lot of 12 personnel, one running back, two tight ends, and 13 personnel with one running back and three tight ends. Those are probably your best pass catchers on the team, uh, your best receivers on the team, the tight ends. They create matchup problems with defensive coordinators because you can't put a linebacker on them because, you know, Trey Burton and Zach Ertz can outrun linebackers. But you, you can't put a safety on them because they can, you know, post them up and, and, and catch over them. So they create uniqueness in, in how you defend them. So you put uh, 13 personnel in there. You put your big people out there on defense. That means you put 
uh, a extra linebacker and extra um, extra tackling because they can run, you know, defensive tackling because they can run the ball. Well, with those guys, you just still pass from that position. So, you know, I like the fact that they have that ability to do it, and they did it a lot when they were in Kansas City. He had Kelsey, you know. So we're going to be a lot better than what people are thinking. I think we'll be a lot better than what you saw last week from I mean, uh, this last preseason game. We'll be better than that with the addition of Huff doing his thing. They could be a pretty good offense. They just won't be an explosive offense. They're going to be scoring. It's going to be low-scoring games, probably like, you know, maybe 21 to 14 or, you know, scores like that. You won't get into the 30s with this offense, but you will get some consistency because they'll be, you know, slow and grinding it out. How about it, Barrett? We've been sitting here visiting with you for a few minutes, and we haven't even asked one question about the defense yet, which probably tells you where more question marks on offense than defense. But I will ask you about the defense and then say to you, if the defense is more established, if people are more comfortable with the defense, if you're more comfortable with the expectations for the defense, then where are the trouble spots on the defense as you see them? You still have a, you still haven't you know locked down that nickel cornerback. I mean, there's still a couple of guys in the mix. You got Smith, you know, C.J. Smith, he's still in the in the mix. Um, you got, you know, Jalen Watkins, you know, he's a safety, but he can still play in the slot. Uh, you still have Rowe, he's a possibility out there. You know, Ron Brooks. I think Nolan Carroll will definitely be a starter, the opposite of a Kelvin, you know. So, uh, you know, that position is not locked up. And then at the linebacker position, the fact that you're going to have starting linebacker, uh, you know, Michael uh, Kendrick, Michael Kendricks, he's in a position right now. He's got to get his head screwed on straight, man. You know, he's playing in the fourth preseason game. He'll probably be the only starter playing. And the fact that that's going on at this point shows the confidence level that the coaches have in him. So he's got to get it together. You know, he stay healthy, get it together, make sure he goes out and, and, and shows them some really um, early so he can get out of there as quick as possible because the more he's out there, the more apt he is to get hurt play with these young guys trying to make the team so five days ago on my twitter feed this comes through i see some license plate and i think oh that looks like one of the comcast vehicles and then it's this little promo about uh, hey we're welcoming seth joiner and barrett brooks to the eagles game day coverage tell us about what your role is going to be for all the eagles games this season yeah i'll be i'll be uh doing a pregame for comcast me seth ray dinger you know we're, we're gonna be doing you know with michael barkan and the gov pregame, and we're going to do the post-game show, me, Seth, you know, the same crew. So I'm looking forward to it, you know, giving me an opportunity to go out there and talk some real football with some real football guys. Seth is going to give it to you real straight. He's not going to hold back any punches, and I'm probably the guy that's going to be the tamer of the two and breaking down and analyzing things, you know. So you'll get a good mixture of, 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 of healthy competition between me and Seth, and then you'll have the wisdom of a guy like Ray Diddinger, you know. So look forward to a good broadcast, guaranteed. Nobody takes more notes than Ray Diddy, that's for sure. I saw I, Seth was phenomenal last year in a limited role, so I'm looking forward to him getting more reps, if you will. Uh, the Gov is going to be involved. Did I hear you say that? Yes, he's still going to be there. <laughs> you cannot get rid of the Gov, just like you can't get rid of Barrett Brooks. We love Barrett Brooks, baby. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. I really appreciate you guys having me on. Barrett, always appreciate the time, always the insights, and we'll catch you next week. All right. Take it easy, guys.